All right, what's going on everybody? Eric Barassa here, and today I am really excited to talk about my secret weapon, the guitar that I use on pretty much every recording I've ever done, and yet I never talk about it. It's my Laguna LE924, which was designed in partnership between Laguna Guitars and Greg Howe back in the late 2000s, maybe around 2010, somewhere in, in that range. And um, at the time, I had been listening to a lot of shred guitar, like Joe Satriani and Steve Vai and Eric Johnson I'd been listening to for years. But at this time, I was getting into Greg Howe and uh, Michelangelo Badio, like Rusty Cooley at the time, and Dave Martone. Anyway, and as I was listening to these guys, I was like, man, I'm mostly playing on my, my Strat. Uh, I can't remember if I had had my Parker Fly at the time or, or not but uh, I had never owned a proper shred guitar. And yet I was listening to all this fast, intense music, and I thought, I gotta get a guitar like that. So when I discovered that there was um, this bright orange maple fretboard shred guitar designed by one of my favorite guitarists, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta try it. It was made in America, sort of, we'll talk about that, right at $1,000, uh, and then I had a Guitar Center 20% off coupon, I think, and I got it for like 800 bucks. I was just like, this is a no-brainer. Let's try it. But you couldn't play this guitar in the store. So at the time, Laguna had a deal with Guitar Center, like an exclusive partnership, where like right now, today, I think it's, uh, what's the brand? There's some brand that if you go into Guitar Center, you always see it, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, and it's like the Guitar Center partnered brand. 10, 12, 15 years ago, it was Laguna. But they only carried the low end guitars. Uh, they never carried this one in stock. So I just was like, what the heck? Sight unseen, I ordered it uh, brand new and it came to me, no case or anything, just came in the box, set up beautifully, and I instantly loved this guitar. I was like, this is awesome. Let's talk about some of the features of the guitar and why it wasn't a Greg House signature guitar. So Greg has shared with me some info on why he did not want to call it a Greg House signature guitar. So he basically got to design it from the ground up, sort of like a, a super strat style was what he wanted. And of course, maple fretboard, maple neck. And he designed this headstock. Um, I think he, he drew it out. Uh, it's pretty cool, it's a cool shape. It's, it doesn't fit all standard guitar cases. It's a little big, so you really have to find one that works. And fortunately, I found a Fender Strat flight case. Fender flight case was would work. This pickup was designed by Greg in conjunction with DiMarzio specifically for this guitar. They called it like the GH5, I think. So you can't buy it. And then, uh, I don't remember what this is. It's like a DiMarzio Air Norton or, or something like that. Um, 24 frets. One of the really great features about this guitar is the five-way switch. You get your standard bridge position uh, humbucker and it's really hot. And prior to this guitar, I had never had a guitar with a really hot pickup before. And I was like, wow, it's really easy to do liquid legato fast lines and stuff. But then, here's the secret of this guitar, I think. It's position two. Listen to this. It's got this, what Greg would call spank. It's got this spank to it, uh, that, that fender um, quack that you get. And it's, but it's, it's more aggressive than you would get in a Strat. And I use it all the time for distorted rhythm parts. 
um, but I don't really use it for like chords, right? So I don't usually use it like that. Um, I usually will just play single root notes on the lower strings. Versus, here's what that would sound like on the bridge pickup. Position two. So if you ever hear that sound on my recordings, I'm like, how's he getting that, that quack? Um, it's from this guitar. I get a good quack from my strats and my Music Man cut list, but in terms of when the gain is on, nothing gets it quite like this guitar. And I've never played a guitar like this that has that position to sound. It's very unique to, to this guitar, i found. Um, and then the middle position is similar to position two, um, and it's like splitting these ones inside or something. I don't know, it's fine, it's fine, I don't really use it. The neck split pickup. Similar thing, but it doesn't have quite. The, uh, the mid-range or the attack, so I don't usually use that position. And then the neck pickup. Um, I'll use that for, for just like high up the neck stuff. So position one, position two, and position five, I'll use on this guitar, not really positions three or four. So this is my go-to guitar. Anytime I'm struggling to play a lead line on a recording, I'm like, man, I can't quite get it. I get this guitar and then I can do it. Um, it's really easy to play, extremely flat fretboard. I, I wanna say it's like a 14 inch radius. I adore it, I adore, adore, adore it. Oh, and it's a Swamp Ash body, okay? Uh, the Swamp Ash really gives it some bite. Uh, and so I, I dig that. The reason why Greg didn't want to make this a signature guitar is because Laguna wanted to keep the price point under $1,000 for this guitar. And to do that, they had to have, you guessed it, a Floyd Rose license tremolo system. So it's not an actual Floyd Rose. Made Greg say, I can't put my name on that. He was willing to be in all the promo shots and videos and say, I designed this in conjunction with Laguna, but he didn't want to call it a Greg House signature model. So of course, as soon as he got his models in, he swapped the uh, licensed Floyd out for an actual Floyd. And uh, I eventually did that to mine as well, based on his advice. Once I did that, the there was a little bit more sustain, um, at least according to Greg, that he could hear. He was like, Eric, your guitar has more more sustain now. And I was like, okay, cool. I couldn't hear the difference, but his, his ear's a lot better than mine. Um, the one thing that changed though, is that a standard Floyd Rose is set for a more rounded, like Strat-like fretboard radius. And the uh, licensed, one that came with the guitar was set for this flat, flatter fretboard. So I had some issues once I got this, having to get the, the height adjusted. I love having the Floyd on. It's one of those things though, still, it's really finicky. You know, you do a dive bomb and it's out of tune. So then you just gotta pull up on the bar real quick to reset it, annoying. Usually like once a year or something, I gotta take it into my guy to have him reset it up so that the Floyd will stay in tune. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the time I almost stupidly sold this guitar. So in, I'm in my late 30s now, but back in my 20s, I went through a period where if I wanted a new guitar, I would sell a guitar that I had. Um, and so there are several guitars that I have um, sold and wish that I still had. Um, so there was one period in time where I was just like, oh, maybe, maybe I, I shouldn't have the Laguna because I want something else, which is stupid because I play this guitar all the dang time. I don't know. I was bored and I wanted something else. So I was looking at selling it and these things were only going for about $450 used. Really, it should be selling for like seven or 800 bucks. And I remember I actually listed it 
for sale. And there were only a couple of them for, for sale. I'm so glad I, I took it down off of eBay. This was before Re- Reverb. I took it down off of eBay after a couple of weeks. And I was just like, you know what? I, I don't want to sell this guitar. I want to keep it. And I'm, I'm so incredibly glad that I kept it. Because now, like with everything, uh, it seems like with musical instruments and equipment, there's that period where when you get it, it's hot at first. And then everyone kind of forgets about it, and it kind of drops in value in the used market, and kind of nobody cares. But then you wait enough years, and all of a sudden it's rare, and people who originally owned it want it again, and they're willing to pay more for it. Last, It's been a while since I've checked, but last time I checked, uh, one of these was going for at least $1,000 uh, on eBay. And so I have a feeling I would have eventually gotten to a point where I said, man, I'd like to have one of those again. And then I would have had to pay more for it than I had originally paid for mine. Plus, I would have had to get the Floyd Rose all over again and and deal with that. Greg Howe actually has a blue one of these. Uh, He has a couple of them. And he was willing to sell me one of his blue ones. And I I had thought about taking him up on that offer, but, but I haven't yet. I don't know if he would still be willing to sell it to me or or not. That's the the Laguna LE924. It really is a rare bird. I, I've gone to stores several times and played like Charvels and Jacksons and Shred, Super Strats like this that cost twice as much. Uh, and I'm like, I, I don't like these. I I don't I like compared to this. Well, I, this, this guitar is the perfect super strat shred guitar. <laughs> 